This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Welcome back. Jonathan Clark, we're in the studio with our good friend Matthew Cause from Nada Surf, the 2020 version of the band, the new album right here. Never Not Together. They're playing the Music Hall of Williamsburg tonight in Brooklyn and also Sunday night in Manhattan at the Bowery Ballroom. They are on tour everywhere, all the tour dates, notasurf.com. Welcome, Matthew. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks, Jonathan. It's, it's been a while, right? Yeah, it's yeah. been a while. Um, and you were born right here in New York City, but you're now living in the UK, or are you trying to trade off between two cities yeah no i was, I was born here in, in in new york um i've been living mostly in the uk for about 10 years okay uh i have a i have a a, a great 15 uh, year old over there i'm still living there for family reasons um and uh you know it's great we my wife and i might move back in a couple of years okay right um, but yeah. we're really, really enjoying it right now uh yeah. are you a new father or something or i'm also fair? i'm uh, also a new father i have a two and a half year old yeah ah, congratulations thank you so much it's amazing how's that going yeah it's, it's great you know it's the best uh, I want to go back, if you don't mind, I just want to hit the rewind button for a second here. I want to go back to the debut album first, High Low, yeah. uh, released in 1996. This new album is the band's ninth studio album, but I want to ask you about that first album because mm -hmm. somehow, some way, and this is a really amazing story, and I'm asking it for obvious reasons, um, somehow, some way, you got your initial demos for that album to the one, the only, Rick Ocasek, who unfortunately uh, left us way too early. It is a great story. Will you tell that story for us, how you managed to hook up with Rick Ocasek on that first album? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So we'd, we'd made a record, um, and then we'd changed drummers, and uh, but we still wanted to put this record out. Um, didn't know what to do with it, really. And I had this tape in my pocket, and I was sitting on the subway one day next to Mitch Easter. Whoa! Or pretty close to Mitch Easter. And for whatever reason, I was just too too shy to bug him he was reading the paper and i, I just didn't do I it i saw patty smith on the one train once that yeah was pretty amazing yeah, yeah yeah and i've and i felt like i regretted not having approached him and i told myself i would never let that happen again and then a couple of weeks later i was walking out of the knitting factory and and uh the knitting factory in manhattan yeah right down here that's right and yeah rick ocasek was walking in and um you know i've just loved him my whole life you yeah. know as a as a as a songwriter and as you know, and in the cars, and then also as a producer because he made really great records too. Yeah, so at that point, Weezer, that's right, right? and yeah. somebody else, I think. I can't. Bad Brains, yeah, um, you know, Romeo Void, you know, interesting stuff. Yeah. And so, I approached him, and he was super kind, and he said, "Oh, is your is your phone number on there? Oh, that's great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's wow. Oh, thank you. you know, sorry. Back in the you. day with cassettes with phone numbers. That's right. right? That's right. That's right. And so. Uh, as the expression goes, I went out to dinner on that for like a week. You know, I never <laughs> thought he'd call, but it was like it was such a fun thing to have done. You know, which totally in fantasy land, nothing was going to come of it. You're like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. I, at least I went up. To yeah, him. man, it felt yeah. exactly it felt really good. And then a couple of weeks later, I was uh, coming home from a weekend away, and my my roommate has this kind of Cheshire cat smile on his face, and he's like, you should listen to the answering machine. The answering yeah, machine, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and it was a message from from Rick. And he's like, here's my number. Give me a call. That is crazy. It's really crazy. So I called him and he said, well, do you want to come over? I'd like to talk to you. And um, and it was a summer night. So I get on my bicycle. I lived in Soho on Sullivan Street. And I biked up to 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 Gramercy Park where he right. lived. Yeah. And I, I as it happens, this is kind of a, a punchline, but I, I locked my bike, but I didn't lock it to anything because I was just in like in fantasy land. fantasy land so i just leaned the bike against the post so you, you you locked it up to air to basically? air yeah exactly <laughs> exactly as i discovered later um so at the door rick and and paulina greeted me and um they were so nice and really down to earth and and put me at ease really fast you know which is a great quality in anybody yeah. just to make you comfortable you know and um i was sitting at the kitchen table and uh rick's making some coffee and i i wrote i said this in an article that I wrote about it, and it's kind of paying myself a compliment, but I share it because it was so meaningful to me, is that Paulina said, she said, he, he likes your phrasing. Whoa. And nobody had, you know, it was the first time anyone from the outside, I felt, had, like, seen something in me or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it was, it really, it really meant a lot, you know. It was very, very kind of her to share that and, and kind of him to think it, really. And so he invited me down to his basement studio, and we sat there, and he said, what, what is this cassette? And I said, well, it's a record, you know, but... Um, we have a new drummer, and you, you know, might want to record some more. He said, "Well, look, this 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 tape is really good. You could put it out as a record, but if you want to record these songs again, 
I want to produce it and I'll be really cheap. Wow. And and um, meanwhile, he, he said, do you have a record? I'm oh, sorry. I interrupted. No, you. no, no, no. But really cheap. I mean, that's amazing for him to say that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Great. Totally. Yeah. It's r- right. Like <laughs> from the heart, you know. And uh, he said, do you have a record deal? I said, no. <laughs> you know, I don't have anything. He said, okay, well, you know, just keep in touch. I said, okay. Two weeks later, uh, we're playing a bar called the Rebar on 16th Street. I remember that place. Yep, yep. Yeah. And we play a show for, you know, as usual, like 25 of our friends or something. And somebody approaches me after the show, um, a guy called Bobby McCain. And he said, I work at a label called Number Six. And I'd heard of Number Six because the Unrest Imperial record came out on that label, which I loved. And then a, a, a Dean Wareham single, Dean Wareham from Luna. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, that's exciting, you know? And so I gave him a cassette, and he called me the next day, and he said, well, actually, um, my day job is I worked at Electra. Ah. And, uh, and my, f- my friend, Ben, ben Weber, who's now our manager, um, brought it to his boss, uh, Josh Deutsch, who's an A&R guy, and, he, oh, wants to meet, and yeah. he wants to meet you today. So we get the guys together, and we go up to meet there, and, and we're offered a deal on the spot. And... Um, we don't know what to do because I'd wanted to be on on Matador, you know that was like my dream. Yeah. Or merge, um, right. And uh, but still, you know, it's an exciting offer. But meanwhile, it's basically Warner Brothers Atlantic. Or whatever. Y- yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I call. Oh, and also, the f- here's the funny thing is, it's kind of funny is that Josh says, "Well, do you have any producers in mind?" We're like, "Yeah, Rick or Cassie," <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Well, if you can get them, like." We we got them already, <laughs> you know. That was exciting. Are they like really? How do yeah, you do that? To- like, yeah, totally. Because it's all fairy tale. Like, yeah, not, none of this is. This isn't. I feel like this doesn't happen, you know. And so, we call Rick for advice, and he's like, "Well, Electra's good, you know. Cars on Electra, but let me make a call." And so, uh, he calls Maverick in L.A. and they fly us out there, and we talk to them, and they offer us a deal. And then, uh, um, I don't know what to do to choose between them. So I asked my sister who used to work at Was Hall. Alanis already happening on Maverick at the time or no? Yes, I think so, this right? Is post, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, now I'm getting in the, in the music business weeds. Maybe this isn't interesting anymore. But basically, we were offered, and then we were offered another one. We ended up uh, going with um, Electra and then and Rick made the record and it was, you know. Yeah. And, and that experience was really, really special. Right. He, he, uh, he kind of protected us from ourselves. Like we'd do two or three takes and he'd say the, the first one's the best. And we'd be like, no, take two, take three. We made fewer mistakes. He'd be like, that's okay. You go home and listen to these tapes and you come back and tell me what you think. And he was always right. Right. He knew the fresh one was the best. And after every every time we'd choose a take, he'd say, hey, could you go out in the room and just sing me a scratch vocal? A scratch vocal is a, a like a, yeah, pret- yeah, pretend, reference. a yeah. reference vocal. He, and I'd do one and he'd be like, yeah, do it one more time. And I'd do it one more time. So then we spend, you know, a week cutting the basic tracks and then i'm kind of nervous because i know you know it's oh now time i gotta to cut vocals I, it's time to sing the record you know and, and i'm like is it time to do vocals and he says you're done <laughs> you w- he wouldn't he wouldn't let me he just we kept all the reference tracks oh he secretly recorded all of them that's right that's, that's why he asked me to do another one you don't usually do two scratch vocals but he knew that way he, he, he could you know use a double or pick and choose or whatever but i think he knew that the red light of pressure was gonna make me less natural so yeah. that's what I mean by protecting us. Well, he would know. He'd been doing it for what twenty five yeah. years at the point at that point. I yeah, mean. totally. So that kind of you know that kind of like subtle kindness is he was he was great. And yeah. uh, I also read that at, at some point the record company wanted to hear the album. Yes, and he, and he would not let them nope. come in. <laughs> no, he didn't. And he's Rick Ocasek, cause, so he can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Right? He, he totally protected us. It was amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, let's let's talk about the new album. Yeah. Uh, b- uh, one last thing on that that album produced by Rick Ocasek had the song popular yes. on it. Yes. I mean, unbelievable. You know, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were a writer for Guitar World at one point. Yeah, I was like an assistant editor. I was a managing editor of Guitar School for a couple of uh, issues, but yeah, I was basically like. Um, I, I did. I, I was the guy who'd interview the new music people. Right. But so, when I read that you re- interviewed Oasis. Yeah, it was amazing. W- did you get both brothers, the whole band? No, I, I mean? just got Noel, and I didn't know much about them. This is right when What's the Story, Morning Glory was about to come out. Um, they were crazy they, then. They were crazy. And, you know, we toured with Super Drag, who we love, and we're like big Beatle fans, and, and when they'd heard of Oasis. It's like, you know, we were pointing out the... the kind of beetle ripoffs in there so i hadn't yeah, yeah. quite i hadn't quite grokked it yeah i hadn't figured out because actually they're you know of course they're great fantastic um and so i didn't know what to expect and i'd read a couple of interviews and saw that noel was re- kind of really um arrogant you know but when i met him at the hotel we sat down for tea and 
he was the nicest guy. He Still was is. S- totally down to earth, super funny, super smart, really sweet, just just great. I was so surprised. I was like, I love this guy. And then I hit record on the tape recorder, oh. and he totally changed, you know, and he started. But it was amazing because everything he said was, like, quote worthy. Yeah, All yeah. All of it was hilarious. Oh, my God. So, you know, it's kind of, kind of an I've act. I've always a wanted to interview uh, Liam. I haven't gotten the right, chance. I've right, spoken right. to Noel a few times. Right. And, he, and like you said, he's just an absolute sweetheart. Uh, something I should do. There is message in that song. You know, it's it's easier to yell at somebody online, you know, um, and they say that, you know, it's hard to be angry in, in person. And I, I think we're, I, I definitely am, am addicted to my phone. Yeah. It's just true. Um, and... It takes away a little bit of time, takes away a little bit of perspective, uh, but there's also a lot of value in it. Of course, you know we're we're keeping up with th- w- w- keeping up with each other's kids, right? In yeah, a, in a in a new way, and w- and we're reconnecting with people from our past in a new way. So there there are a lot of good things about it, but but you know I don't have anything smart to say about this except that the news bubble that we're in. The news bubbles that we're in, these opposing bubbles, are well, really damaging. You it's know? not new; it's opinion news. Yes, and that's right. Oh, you're you're very right. Right. All that's started by po- Roger Ailes. Actually. Very. You're <laughs> totally right to point that out. That's yeah. true. And and when it's I like s- they're going to give you the news, but we're going to give you our opinion of the news. But I don't yeah. want the opinion. I just want the news, and then I want to form my own opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And and the other thing is that the reason I say in the song, empathy is good, lack of empathy is bad, um, is that. I was having a conversation with somebody um, who was on the opposite side of the aisle from me, and we weren't getting a- anywhere in the conversation because we were really dealing with different sets of facts. It got nowhere. And, um, and I said about a particular political figure, uh, he makes me feel bad. Yeah. And she said, he does? I said, yeah, he makes me feel bad. And, he, and I think he makes other people feel bad too. And then we got somewhere. Right. And though I wish that um, – that the world was run on science. <laughs> that would be better. But yeah. we seem to be far away from that right now. And so I feel like maybe emotions are useful because you can you can sidestep the whole story and you can you can sidestep the the the, the facts and figures that can be unfortunately manipulated and, and, and interpreted in different ways. Absolutely. And just just yeah. say this seems kind, this seems unkind. Yeah. This seems open, this seems closed. Right. This seems like love and this seems like hate, you know, and, and, and maybe that's another angle that might be useful. I love the video for that song, too. Oh, thanks, man. That yeah, was yeah. fun. Now, how did you guys do that? Was that you guys that did that or? No, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great um, guy called uh, Johnny Ronette in, uh, uh, Johnny Sanders, sorry, uh, that's his email. Uh, Johnny Sanders, he's in a group called Teleman. He's in London, and he's a wildly talented video uh, maker, video artist, video editor, um, and he did all that manipulation of the of the, of the, the lyrics. lyrics. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He typed it all out, and and you know, I just sent him what they were, and and he really played with it in a in a really inventive way. I think it's incredible. Yeah, really well done. Yeah. Uh, you also released yes last year. It was sort of continuing on the topic that we were on before, uh, a song. Uh, song for Congress, yeah, yeah, which I played on this show too, oh, which I you. really yeah. loved. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate that. That that song meant a lot to me. Um, what happened was that when I heard about the family separations at the Mexican American border, like a lot of people, I was just heartsick about it. Um, and I contacted my my Congress people, but wished there was something else I could do, something more. And so I thought, as a total moonshot. Why don't I do what I do, you know, music, and and imagine what I would say to a congressperson if I was in front of them, and and put it into song. And um, I was invited when Minor Alps was was on tour. I was invited by a really uh, a great guy called David Schnitger, who was uh, who was uh, John Boehner's deputy chief of staff. He invited us on a private tour of the Capitol after hours, and it, it was really moving, man. It was like going into the heart of the country or something, and to see the ambition of the Founding Fathers. This this place is huge, and that was the country was only 4 million people at the time, but right. it's totally appropriate for a country of 300 million. Like, it it was futuristic, you know? Yeah. And, and I was knocked out, especially by uh, Statuary Hall is a place where, where the governing used to happen, and now it's like there are statues for prominent citizens from ev- every state. But so what I imagined was... If I was a congressperson or a senator and I was walking through there, might I think about history when I saw these statues? And might I wonder, what might these statues be thinking? What might these statues want to say? So, so my angle is to, 
not want to tell a senator or a congressperson what to do, but to ask them to look into their sense of of duty, of um, of of the romance of the country. Like we wanted to be great, you know, we can be great. We should be great all the time, you know, um, and am- and ambition also. Like, don't you want to make your mark by doing something good? rather than making your no mark by just going along with this this kind of group think uh slide down a slope that will yeah yeah you know it, absolutely uh, i tried to play it for congress people i only got to one but I'm, i'll keep trying <laughs> it, it was great it was really exciting and the day that i went to congress to play it for this congress person uh mike levin from california it's okay. amazing um is the day the impeachment hearing was starting and i thought it would be in the capitol building but it was in the longworth building where i was and i the lobby was heaving. I mean, it was crazy that day. Wow. There was a six foot four transvestite reporter in a red dress giving the news. There were people in in shirts saying we know what he did. You know, there were there's a million reporters. Anyway, I'm getting off subject, but but I'm I'm very glad that you played that song. So really everyone check that. out Song for Congress for yeah, sure. No. Uh the name of this new album, Never Not Together. Um I wanna tell I want you to tell us what that means to you, but I was just thinking Never Not Together could actually apply to Not Us Surf because right. despite everything over the years of you guys doing uh, various projects on your own and then the band has never not been together, right? Am I correct yeah, in saying that, that's, that? That's correct. That's correct. I actually got the idea from, um, I was listening to Justin Vernon from Bon Iver in an interview and he said something like, sacred math means that we're, we're all the same or something like that. And it, I was really st- struck by that. And um, it's, it's just perspective, you know, um, when in the moon landing, when the astronauts were on the moon, apparently they were not prepared to see the earth oh, in the sky. Yeah. And that when they saw it, it really blew their minds and that had exploded. Yeah, yeah. And that on some level, they're like, OK, we've just gone to all this effort to come here, which, of course, we're all glad they did. It's inc- incredible. But we've just done, you know, spent all this effort coming here. But that blue ball in the sky, that's the place we need to get right. Yeah, yeah, you know. absolutely, yeah. and and it's true. You know, in this enormous uh, universe, we are never not together. We're we're so alike, and we're just all together on the planet. You know, another uh, song on the new album, I love uh, so much. Love is the name of it, which has recently gotten some good love from Rolling Stone. By the way, I yes, will add that was nice. Uh, the song is so much love. What more can you tell us about this song? Well, I I wrote it in a really weird way. Um, there's a woman called Karen Glauber. Who, uh, I know Karen. Yeah, she's yeah. she's she's really great. We have the same birthday, and we're, you know she's a great friend. And uh, she invites me down to South by Southwest every year to be on a songwriting panel. And and once in a while she's asked me to do something crazy, like write a song on stage. You know, we usually cover you know songs by one of the artists on the panel, something. And this time she said, "Could you uh could you write me a song with a title so much love because that's how you sign your emails and it always cheers me up." <laughs> great. And my first thought was, well, always love inside of love. Those uh, listeners are two other of our songs. I thought, man, that, that's that's too much. But then I thought, no, let me, let me go for it. And and I loved writing it because it was, I think it's something I'd been wanting to talk about for a long time and hadn't known how, which is just goodwill. There's so much of it, you know. The bad actors in this world make a lot of noise, but I think to a great extent, you know, despite our anxieties, uh, we just want to get along. You know, and when you look at traffic outside, <laughs> that's always like that's just people doing. They don't want to crash into each other. They want to kind of obey the rules. Right. You know? Yeah. So there's a lot of there and there and there's community everywhere. You know, so I think there's so much and this is nothing new to anybody, but it's just fun to put it into a song. You know, that that um, there there's so much good feeling and goodwill. And, and that's that's the material. That's all the material we need to get it right. You know, and and and, and sometimes you need to remember it. To, to make you feel better so that you have the energy to get through the trying times that we're in. Matthew Causes yeah. his name, the band Not Us Surf, the new album Never Not Together. Uh, they're playing Music Hall of Williamsburg tonight in Brooklyn, t- uh, Sunday night at the Bowery Ballroom here in the city, and they are on tour everywhere. Check out all the tour dates, notasurf.com. Matthew, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.